Today we're going to talk about how to write code so that some tiles will be able to be collided with or block the sprite and other tiles you can walk right in front of. Um, so I thought I would start by just showing that you don't have to always load up your file. If you were working from one video to the next and you already have the previous video loaded up, you can just hit escape and go up to the top. Let's change this to lesson nine. We're gonna say tile collisions and I'll hit escape and just save that as lesson nine. So you could always load the file, change it and save it that way. So the first thing we're gonna do is change our check limits function because we're gonna have the a ground be the kind of limit of the bottom of the screen. We still need a top and side limit. So I'm gonna go find my check limits function. I'll go ahead and shorten this. So I'm going to want the top, which would be here. If it goes less than zero, that's above the top. I don't want this bottom part. This is gonna get rid of that jumping glitch that I've had. So right now, if I ran my code, the character would fall right through the bottom of my screen. So I won't run it yet. A couple of other things that we're going to do is change these zeros into ones. And I don't want the top to pop down to the bottom anymore because that would actually pop it into the grassy area that I have. So I actually want this, um, if my character hits the top, I want it to just stay at the top. So I'm just not going to let it go off of the screen. So if I go above one, I just want to come back to one. For the left and right, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as wrapping around for now. I might change that at some point if I want my character to just stay on this one screen. Um, I might get rid of this later if I implement um, side scrolling where I can go on to another part of the map. But for now, I'll just leave it as it is, except I'll change this 0 to a 1 and this 232 to a 231. So basically I'm just bringing the border in by one pixel and this is because of the way that we're going to detect the tiles. If I let my character get all the way to 0, it's going to try to detect a tile outside of its current map and I just don't know what's going on outside that current map. Maybe I have something there, maybe I don't. So I'm just kind of bringing in the border just a little bit so I'm always detecting my tiles on my current map. The next code that we're going to write is going to be in the move blobby function. We're going to do a lot of refactoring here. Um, it's possible that it might be easier for you to just kind of delete most of your move blobby function. Let's go into move blobby. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just retype it because I think that's going to be easier than trying to search out where to change things and move things around. Um, but I'll explain everything as we go, so hopefully it'll make sense how we're refactoring it. So I'm going to get rid of all this jump, all this move. I'm actually going to leave update position. Update position doesn't change. But everything else in the move blobby function goes away. I'm going to leave um, this up, down, left, right. I'm going to actually add jump, which was my Z key. So Z. And that was four, just so I remember what my buttons are. So in this function, I want to look at my horizontal movement first, and then I'll look at my vertical movement kind of broken up into what's happening when I go up and what's happening when I go down. So for horizontal movement, I want to check still if a button has been pressed. So if button Let's do left first, so button two was pressed. Then I'll go ahead and put a comment that this is left. Um, then I want to take Blobby's velocity in the x direction, so vx. I want that to be negative, so I'm going to take his speed and multiply it by negative one. So negative one, and then this is the thing that is tricky. It's not an X that I'm going to type. So watch. 
This is going to look like an X, but it's actually a shift 8, so it's an asterisk. All right, so then I'm going to do that negative 1, asterisk, blobby, oopsie, dot speed. Because remember, speed is just a number saying how fast he's going, and velocity adds a directionality to that. So the negative would be left. All right, and then I'm going to set his costume to be the first sprite costume for the left hand set. I have sets of two for mine. So if I look in my sprite editor and I go into the foreground sprites, my looking left is 262. So blobby costume equals 262. And that's it for the left movement. We're going to do something similar for the right movement. So if I'm not moving left, I could be moving right. So if I have button right is three, so button three is pressed, that'll return a value of true. So if that's pressed down and returning true, then comment that this is going to be the right movement. And then I have very similar, I could actually probably just copy this and paste it to make it faster. So this time, blobby.vx, so the x velocity, horizontal velocity, is going to just be positive speed. So I'll take out that negative one times the speed. I want to keep it positive. And then the costume for this, I want to say it's probably 264. Yeah, so 264. Okay. And then if I'm not holding any buttons down, then I don't want to be moving left or right. I just want to stop. So else, the only other possibility is that I want to so I'll do my comment of stop. So I want to stop. And the way to make blobby stop is to make the velocity equal to zero. So the x velocity is equal to zero. And then I'll change the costume um, back to its idle costume which I believe is 256. All right, so, oh, and then I can't forget, end, we'll end this section of code right here. In the next part, I want to check the tiles around Blobby, or around my player. So wherever my player is, I wanna look around where I am and see if there's any tiles that if I hit them, I want to stop. And if I look at my sprite editor, we talked about this in the last video, I have kept my sprites that are kind of blocking sprites or solid sprites in the upper portion. So anything before sprite 64, so this would be sprite 63, 2, 1, no, on, on, lower, 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 all the way to zero, is going to be a solid sprite. I don't care about all this black area in here, as long as I haven't used it anywhere. It's not really part of the equation. So only the sprites that I've used are going to be checked because they're part of the map. So in order to check the tiles, I'm actually going to make a helper function. The helper function is pretty small, so it kind of felt a little bit silly to write it, but when I put it all together, the, the code was so long, it didn't even fit on the screen, even with the small text size. So I think the helper function makes the code a little bit more clear about what's going on. So we're going to go ahead and write a helper function. We're not done with this move blobby yet. Um, and in fact, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to add a comment that says, check for horizontal movement, just so I know what this section of code does. And then the next section of code, we're going to check for collisions on the corners of Blobby. I tried it like just side to side and top and bottom, but there is there were issues and I think corner checking is more smooth um, and more accurate. So we're going to check the corners of Blobby to see if there's any solid tiles anywhere around there. So here we're going to check for corner collisions. Okay, we'll come back and add that code later. And there will be a little bit more code jumping and um, gravity. But for now, let's just leave that. And then we have our update position. That's going to stay at the end of this function. So we're just going to keep moving this down, down, down.
All right, so let's go to the very bottom and we're gonna add our function. I'm gonna call it tile at, um, I had a longer name that was maybe more descriptive, but I got really tired of typing it and I think this works. We're checking, is there a tile at? And then the, we're actually gonna have inputs this time. So I'm gonna put X comma Y, you can put a space or not. So these inputs are things that I have to give as information to this function. So I'm saying, I'm promising you function that I will tell you an X value and a Y value. And because I'm making that promise, then inside this function, I can use that X and Y value to do some calculations. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and end my function. There's my end of my tile at function. Okay, and this is actually just gonna be a single line so super simple, but it's a new command. So I'm going to return the value of this new function, this new command. And the new command is mget. And mget, I think, probably stands for mapget. So if you think about our, our map, there are pixels, 8 by 8, in each one of these. What the mget function takes as an x and a y is actually the cell. So this cell would be zero, zero. That would be the input if you wanted to know what tile was here. Or if you wanna know what tile is here, the input would be two comma four. Or over here, it would be 15 comma four. So it's the cell number instead of the X comma Y pixels. So we're actually gonna to have to do a little conversion so that our blobby XY or player XY, which is in by pixel, pixel by pixel by pixel, is converted into this kind of cell map. So mget is going to take an x and a y, but like I said, this x is going to be the location of my player, which is by pixels, and this x and y is going to be the cell. So each cell is eight pixels, so if I just take my x and y of my player, and divide it by eight. And I do a double divide here. The double divide makes sure that I get a, um, a whole number back, an integer back. So if I do like, you know, 12 divided by eight, I'm not gonna get a decimal answer. It's actually gonna round it down for me. So it's gonna be like, how many times does eight fit into 12? I'm just gonna give you that number. All right, so same here, I'm gonna double divide actually called integer division, I think, um, by eight, and that'll give me the cell number instead of the pixel coordinates. And then mget does something that is called returning. So the m inside this mget function, it has some code kind of behind the scenes that we don't need to see. We just can trust that it's going to do what it does. It's going to give us back um, sprite number or tile number of whatever tile is at that location. So for example, if I go in here and I'm looking at, it's a little distracting because I have my boulder attached to my mouse, but if I look at this purple platform that I have, this left hand end here, whatever this location is, if I do mget and my player is here, it will tell me 48. Up here, it's gonna tell me the number, so 48. So then, once I know the number of the sprite, I can say if it's less than 64, that's a solid sprite, I can't move into that location. Okay, so that's the code that we're gonna write. What I'm gonna do is actually say less than 64. So this function, instead of returning the number, is actually gonna tell me, is this tile a solid? So maybe I could have said here, solid tile at, and that maybe would have been a little bit better description. So this is always going to be either true or false. Is it less than 64 or is it not? Write a comment in there about that. That might be a good idea. There we go. So this function returns true if the tile at this pixel location is one of my solid tiles that I've decided are solid. Next, we're going to check for horizontal collisions at the corner. So 
I'm going to look at all the corners and decide if I'm allowed to move left and right. Okay, so I'm going to go back up to move blobby. I'm going to come here where I'm going to check for corner collisions. So I should maybe say horizontal collisions at the corners. All right. So to do this, I'm going to do a little bit sort of like more helper code to make it easier to read my kind of complicated code that's going to happen. I'm going to say what's happening for up, down, oops, left, and right. This up, down, left, and right represents the distance I need to look in that direction to know what the next tile is. So if you remember, our sprites x and y coordinate start in the upper left. So if I want to know if the tile to the left is a solid tile, then I need to know where I'm going to move. And if I know how far I'm going to move, I'll know which tile I'm standing on. So I'm going to look at where I am and then plus the velocity. So let's actually code that and then I'll talk about the other ones. So for left, like I said, I just want to take Blobby's current position. And then I want to add how far it would move to the left if I was moving left. So I know where I'm at over there. Okay, and it could be positive or it could be negative. Up is the same thing. I'm already at the top. All I need to do is look, how, look at how far I would move up if I was moving. So that's going to be the velocity number. That tells me how far I'm moving. So I'm going to take my y value that I'm already at and I'm going to add how far I would move in the y direction. Okay, those are reasonably understandable. Then what we can do is take um, Blobby's current x, y position, upper left corner, and if I wanted to know what the next tile is to the right, I can take um, Blobby's current position plus the velocity, but then also I have to think about the fact that Blobby has width. So I don't want to only take that upper left corner and see if it's colliding with things because then Blobby's body would already be inside the thing it was trying to collide with. So in order to take care of that, I do a similar calculation. I'm going to do, so to go down would be Blobby dot Y plus Blobby dot VY but then also plus seven. And I tried to kind of think of a way to explain why it's seven and not eight. And when I tried it out, it just works. If I do eight, Blobby is one pixel inside the block that he's standing on. And I think it's because of the way the check happens. By the time you check it, you're already in it, maybe. So anyway, seven worked. Eight makes him sit one pixel inside. Same for right hand movement. We need to check all the way across. Add on our velocity. So start with the upper left corner. We're going to add on our how far we're going to move. The x. And then the width of the sprite. Minus 1. Because that's what made it work nicely. All right, so now this is not actually doing anything yet. It's just kind of going to make my next step more simple. You could, anywhere I put a U, you could put this stuff instead. But you'll see how long the code would be. Okay, so again, we're moving that update position code at the end of this function. We're just moving it down to kind of get it out of the way. If we're moving left, we want to check the upper left and lower left corners to see if there's any blocks that, are, that would be blocking us. So if we're moving left, that would be blobby dot vx. If that velocity is less than zero, we know it's negative, and that means he's moving left. So if our velocity is negative, and I'm going to put parentheses here, and I'm going to put all this next code inside these parentheses. 
So we have two parts to this, well, kind of three, and they all go together. So we have tile at, and we want more parentheses. That's the parentheses are going to stack up here, so pay really close attention to these parentheses. Um, so we want upper left. So I want my x value first, so it would be left, comma, my y value would be up. Okay, so that's going to be my current, well, my potential future position of blobby, and that, moving that way. So, or, again, another set of parentheses. If we have a tile at the left, comma, down, so lower left position, if we have tiles at either one of those positions, then we don't want to move. We want to stay still because we've been blocked by a tile. So inside here, we're going to do blobby dot the movement velocity, dx, equals zero, and that'll make them stop. Okay. Or another thing that can happen is that we might be moving to the right. So super similar. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Am I? I will. Yeah, let's copy it. We're going to make just a few changes here. First, we're going to add an else here. Um, and that is because this is an either or situation. We cannot be moving both left and right. We have to choose. If we could do both, then we could use if and if, but not the case here. So I'm going to change this less than to a greater than. So if my velocity is greater than zero or positive, then I'm moving to the right. And I want to check my right hand side. So instead of left upper, I want right upper. And instead of left lower or down, I want right down. So if we are moving to the right and we run into a solid tile, then we want to stop again. So the velocity of blobby is going to be zero. And that is it for that section. Okay, so in the next section, we are going to talk about gravity and what happens when you're falling and checking bottom collisions. Basically, we're going to check whether we hit something, and if we didn't hit anything, then we're going to let gravity take over. Let's do a comment here. Check for bottom collisions. So if we run into a tile at the bottom, So you can probably kind of start thinking about if we're coming down, what corners would we want to check? Well, bottom left and bottom right. So this tile at would be left, bottom, or down. Or tile at right and down. So right bottom corner. So if either, if we hit a tile on either of those corners, then our y velocity needs to be zero, so we'll stop going down. Otherwise, if we're not hitting something, then we should be falling. So we need to implement gravity, which would be, and we we'll make our blobby y velocity equal to its current y velocity plus gravity. And you may or may not remember from a while back, we have a gravity constant up in the variables at the top of the code. So I'll show you that real quick, and then we'll come back to this line 75. Oh, passed it. There it is. So we have the blobby, we have the slime, and then we have gravity right here. Okay, so back to line 70 something. 75. All right, and then that is the end of that section. And then we're going to check if we're jumping. Okay. 
Um, so when we're jumping, the button press was zero. Is that true? Oh, no wonder I had second thoughts about this jump z equals four. So z does equal four, but we're not using z for jump. We're using z for projectile. I'm going to delete this. This is semi-correct and semi-incorrect. It's definitely not the jump that we're using. We're actually using up for our jump. So down here, we're going to do if we have the uh, and P. So if we've recently pressed the button, if we just pressed the button up, then we want to change our y velocity to be going up, which is weirdly negative in this world where positive is down and negative is up. And I'm going to do negative 3. Negative 2.5 is good. It just depends on how high you want to be able to jump. And the costume for the jump, for my jump, is, let's take a look. Um, I think this one is the costume. So 258 is looking up and kind of jumping. 258. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you something here. This, I'm only checking for a button press. I'm not checking whether he is on the ground at all. So when I test this code out, assuming there are no errors, he will be able to jump, 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 kind of fly like Flappy Bird style. Um, and then I'll show you what you can do to change this if you want to allow just one jump. All right, and I better probably save because this was a lot of code to potentially lose. So I'm going to save lesson nine. Okay, and let's run it. Ooh, nice. Okay, uh-oh. So my blobby's over here, but he's not falling. Mm. So clearly I have implemented gravity incorrectly somehow. Okay, well that's good. He can't move through there. Up makes him jump. Hmm, that I can't go right. Okay, so let's take a look at what I have done wrong. So, um, I forgot to come back up here, and I, I was playing around with this, and there's actually this plus one here that I'm supposed to have, and I think this is actually what takes care of the um, sinking into the ground by one pixel. Anyway, um, so we have blobby.vy equals blobby.vy plus gravity. Oh, yeah, B equals zero, so it stops. If left down, right down. Hmm. Oh, huh. Look what I did. I have three Y's and only two X's here. Right should have been blobby dot X. I will go back and put a tag when I at that place in the video. Because probably you noticed and were wondering what the heck I was doing. Okay, so blobby.x. All right, let's see if that fixes it. Ah, there he went. Okay, so he fell down. I kind of missed it. He was fast running around. He's not sinking into the ground at all. He can jump. And he kind of does a little bit of wall walking or wall, wall climbing. So like when it's doing its um, corner checking. He kind of gets caught on the edge there, which I actually kind of like. I could probably fool around with it and fix it, but he's, he's doing pretty good. Okay, so here's the jumping. So I can jump, 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 jump. I can go through the, the tile from the bottom, but I still stick on the top. So if you like that, you don't have to do the next part if you want him to be able to jump through the platforms. Um, I want him to be able to not go through the platforms. So I'm going to implement a little bit more code that checks if he's hitting the um a tile from the like from his head let's double check this yep so we can't go up through the roof so that's good all right everything's looking pretty good i do want to actually test um a tile that is not a collision tile i realize that i have all of these are my collision tiles 
and I didn't put any non-collision tiles in here, so I kind of want to check that out. So I'm going to add that, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like, and then we'll add in the um, collision for the rest of the platforms. All right, so here's what it looks like. I realized I got a little too fancy. I was trying to like make the cloud go behind the platform, and then I realized that I had you know, the corners were sky corners, so if I want to do that, I have to make sure the cloud is kind of in the middle here. I'm just going to leave it for now. Um, and then I put in this little sign. So when I move around, there we go. Come in. There we go. I can go right through there. And the clouds don't bother me at all. There we go. All right. Oh, before I check for top collision, I wanted to show you the other way of doing jumping. So let me find my jump here. Okay, so checking for jump. So if I want to make sure that Blobby is um, on the ground or at least not moving before he's allowed to jump, then I can add in. So if the button up arrow is pressed and blobby.vy is zero, so if he's not already moving up or down, then I'm allowed to jump. So let's try that. Oh, the, oh. Oh, you know what? That was a very weird error. So it says then expected near equals. It's not about the then, this is about, this is supposed to be a double equals. I don't know if I've talked about that in any of these videos, the difference between this double equals and the single equals. The double equals is checking if something is equal. So is the blobby.vy equal to zero? It's like a question. And this equal sign is saying, I want this value to be stored to this name. So it's always name on the left, value on the right. All right, let's test that again. Okay, so I can jump, but I'm, I can't double jump. I can only jump if I hit the ground again. The one thing that I have realized about this is that if you can get yourself stuck on a wall, you're allowed to keep jumping because your velocity is zero, which I'm okay with that. Again, with some fiddling around, if you didn't like that, you could probably make that work. So I've set mine up, so now my game is impossible because I can't get on any of these platforms without multiple jumps. I could change my um, gravity. I could change my jump force. I could implement a double jump. Um, if you're interested in a jump, double jump, let me know. This video is already too long, so I'm not going to do it right here, but I can walk you through it if that's something you want to implement. Or you can do like the flappy bird, just let them fly away. Next, let's implement the like top collision. This is the last thing. Okay, so after the jump, we're gonna check for, let's say top collision. Um, for the top collision, if I'm moving up, my velocity is negative. So if my velocity is less than zero, then I'm going up. And I'm gonna check my upper two corners. Oops. So upper two corners would be left up. I'm gonna have to put more parentheses in here, but I'll finish this first. Or right up. And then I need this or in parentheses. Yes, I had to convince myself of that for a second. Um, because otherwise it's gonna do this test and then this test and the way, I'm not gonna get into it right now, but the way that the um, logic works, it would mess up what we're trying to do. So we wanna see definitely is the velocity going up and is, are we hitting a tile on, with our head? 
Okay, so I need a then. Um, we want to stop, so blobby dot y equals zero. I'm going to go ahead and put my jump back to a flying jump just so I can test my platforms since I don't have my jump force high enough. So we can't get through that. We can get on there. We can't get through from the bottom. So perfect. I think this is the record for the longest video. Hopefully you learned a lot and got some really cool movement and platforms or walls or whatever you need to have to have collisions in your game. In the next project, we're going to be looking at objects, like picking up objects and colliding with enemies and how you can kind of keep track of those things. All right, we'll see you next time.